Hi, my name is Sandy Baird, and I'm here with Kurt Maida, and we're going to have a discussion about what's happening in the United States and around the world. Um, and Kurt is a lawyer in Burlington, and I am also, and we're also citizens of this great United States, and that's how we're talking, as citizens and as very concerned citizens most of the time. We're here today to talk a little bit about what's going on with the Biden presidency, and Kurt has a lot of feelings and opinions and facts about the Biden administration, and so do I, but I'll let's start the conversation. So what do you think? What's going on? All right, so we're about 10 months into this administration, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm gonna say something that's probably revolutionary for a lot of people that are on the left and on the right. I'm gonna say that uh, the Biden administration has continued a lot of the policies that the Trump administration mm -hmm. Uh, established during during his presidency, much to the chagrin of a lot of people that are in Biden's base, mm -hmm. and in contrast to a lot of the news reporting on the left and the right, uh, I think the two presidents have more in common in terms of policy than one would believe. Mm -hmm. Candidate Biden uh, spoke out can I interrupt you for a minute? So are you referring mainly to foreign policy or also domestic or both? Uh, I'm going to point to both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, examples of foreign policy mm -hmm. where the two administrations, there's actually been continuity between the two administrations, is on the issue of, of Cuba, right. policy towards Cuba. Uh, President Trump, during the course of his administration, put through about 243 sanctions, and that's a fact, 243 additional sanctions on, on Cuba. Cuba. On Cuba? Poor little Cuba. Poor little Cuba. Yeah. And uh, candidate Biden ran on the fact that he was going to go back towards the Obama approach of reconciliation and repro reproachment with Cuba, and, candidate, and President Biden has not done so. Uh, to that list of 243 sanctions, President Biden has actually added another two, making 245. What, what are sanctions exactly? I don't, I don't know if our audience really understands sanctions and what they do to a country. Well, the sanctions are, the sanctions regime, specifically in the case of Cuba, uh, has to do with a embargo on that country, which the Cubans call a blockade, an economic... What's the difference? Well, the, a blockade is basically what the Cubans claim, an embargo can be looked at as a unilateral action on the part of the United States mm -hmm. in, in this example, that we have certain penalties that we've imposed on Cuba f because of the c type of government, the form of government, and the leadership that it's had. Uh, the, so that's an embargo. It's a, it's a regime of different sanctions of penalties. Uh, what the Cubans claim is that— For trade or what? For everything, for everything, for okay. life in general okay. uh, on that island, mm -hmm. uh, which affects trade, which affects its economy, which affects its medical tourism. care, tourism, right. uh, a number of different areas, and str and of course uh, its defense too. Right. Uh, what the Cubans have always claimed is that this was not an, just an embargo, a sanctions regime, or penalties imposed by its biggest neighbor; that it's actually a blockade. Now the difference here is when it's a blockade. No other country can come in and actually do business and work with Cuba, which is largely the case in many areas. Uh, most countries have companies that work and do work in Cuba and in other countries. However, Get, let, look, let's look at an example. Don't the Italians, for instance, have a hotel chain there? Sure. Yeah. But the premise under that hotel chain that the, they have to operate by is that if they are going to work with Cuba, now this is the extraterritoriality principle right. that, the, uh, that the embargo sanctions regime has actually imposed, is that if you work with Cuba, and I'm going to use very simple terms, you can't work with the United States. Okay, right. right. So a company, let's say you and I had a hotel company in a, in a different country, or a, you know, we, we sold cars. Mm -hmm. uh, we would have to make a decision whether or not we want to work with Cuba, uh, a country of about 11 million people, mostly kind of on the poor side, mm -hmm. or the United States, 
200, uh, 320 million right. people, one of the richest countries in the world. Right. And we would have to forego that market Ugh. for Cuba. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make a whole lot of economic sense to do that unless you have something in your, you know, in your DNA that makes you want to specifically work with Cuba to or the exclusion. Be fair. Yeah, uh -huh. to the exclusion of the United right, States. Right, right. So that's the decision one has to make if they're going to do business with Cuba if they're from another country. Right. And that's certainly that's something that we actually, as the United States, through its sanctions regime, have imposed on Cuba and other countries. So that's why Cuba calls it a blockade, because right. economically, sure, there are a couple of company, companies that have chosen to work with Cuba, but normally you have to be nuts to give up a market of 320 million affluent people, many affluent people, uh, not all, but and to the, uh, you know, and prefer a small island country of 11 million, mostly okay, right. poor people. Right, so the, com the, the countries that do do business in Cuba can afford yes. to do so, like China. Certainly. Or Russia. But even China and Russia, you know, yeah. What, yeah. If, you t if you take a company in, that, in, in China, let's, let's use as an example, they would be crazy to you know, think that we're, they're going to succeed and thrive without the U.S. market 90 miles but away. But they do do business in Cuba. They do. Ex there are exceptions, yes. Yeah. yeah. Not many, though. Yeah. Not many. No, big ones, big countries right. can do that. They can. Probably. They, they can, can afford to do, do it. If um, they can and the United do States that. doesn't cut off China. No, they don't. No, because we can't afford to right. do that however, either. However, if a Chinese company did business in Cuba, it is excluded from doing business with the United yeah, States. But does China have any private companies in the first place? All their companies are really state-owned, or at least majority state-owned, correct? Yeah, yeah, not probably very different from Fannie Mae and Fannie right, Mac. Right, right, and Russia is the same or not? Russia has always been uh, friendly toward Cuba. Sure, sure, but that being said, private Russian companies right. always have one eye on the American market. Sure. Absolutely, which makes yeah. sense because of the population, because of right. the, uh, you know, the American economy. The okay, consumer. so but you're arguing that um, Biden has continued most then of Trump's foreign policy. A lot and of And that's an example. Policy. So Cuba was an example. Yeah, right. Another example is Iran. Mm -hmm. uh, by candidate Biden in 2020 mm -hmm. mentioned that it was a terrible uh, act on Trump's part. Right. To unilaterally pull out of the Iran deal, right, and which basically allowed Iran to multiply their enriched uranium by tenfold since, right. since the uh, since we've departed from this deal. Candidate Biden said it was a terrible uh, decision to go that route. Uh, his current national security advisor, Jake Sullivan, in 2000, I want to say 19 when he was, I think he was in a think tank, and he made a comment about the pullout from the, uh, from the Iran deal. deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he called it uh, unilateral, uh, pred I'm sorry, predatory unilateralism mm -hmm. on the part of the Trump administration to do that. However, 10 months into the uh, Biden administration, we have a situation where there really isn't any major move towards re-entering that deal. And as huh. I mentioned before, in that time frame between uh, Trump pulling out and present, uh, Iran has about 10 times the amount of enriched uranium that it had when the deal was being abided mm -hmm. by by the United States as well as other powers. Okay, I read today, however, I mean, certainly one of our main allies, Israel, doesn't want a re-entry into that deal, right? Uh, they, so what's going on there? I mean, are we just going with Israel then the same way as be always, or what's the deal? What, what have we changed about Iran? Anything? Uh, perhaps. I mean, that's what we are doing. But that was a, a major departure on the part of the Obama administration right. to engage in that deal. Right. If folks have a memory of, you know, the, uh, the beginning stages of that deal, the negotiations, uh, President Netanyahu of Israel at that time went before the General Assembly yes. of the United Nations. Against Obama's wishes. Right. Uh, in the General Assembly yeah. and held up a picture of a ticking bomb mm -hmm. with a fuse that was uh, about to, you know, hit. A his. bomb that he believed that Iran was going to have. Correct. Right. Okay. Correct. Yeah. So, so he, he opposed the deal always. He was always opposed to the deal. However, under uh, Secretary of State John Kerry at the time, mm -hmm. 
uh, they worked fairly hard, the Obama administration, to engage in this deal, and they had to get Russia on board as well as uh, the Germans and the, and the British and, and the French. French. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it was a difficult deal to orchestrate, but it did work out, and there was actual, um, you know, oversight of the programs right. that Iran had. Iran then, was allowing inspectors right. to come in to view what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Now, are these things, you know, without error? Absolutely not. not but it was but better than what we have now and what we have well, before. Well, without saying what was better or what was worse, what your contention is, is that— If the premise is that Iran should not develop right, a nuclear but, bomb. But the other premise is, is that Trump took us out of that deal. That's correct? Correct. Okay. And so what you're saying is that Biden has not put us back into the deal. Right. So interestingly, uh, you know, a big part of Trump's rhetoric was, you know, he was the deal maker. Yeah. He was he, he he wasn't opposed to the deal or dealing with Iran. He said he didn't think the deal was good right. that Obama had struck. He wanted to negotiate a better deal. And interestingly, uh, one of the excuses that the Biden administration now has used for not jumping back into the deal, assuming that the Iranians are even interested at this point, at this point, uh, is that it is now criticizing uh, the Obama administration's uh, deal by saying we need to strike a better deal. Mm -hmm. Right. Sim similar to the uh, rhetoric that President Trump right. had on okay, Iran. Okay, so what about Afghanistan? Afghanistan, the uh, President, President Biden continued Trump's uh, attempt to withdraw from that country. That was the, Okay, so uh, that's a continuation. That's a continu that that's seems a clear to continuation be... of policy. In terms of how it was done, right. who knows if the if President Trump would have done a better job I think in so. terms of the optics. Uh, there wasn't a lot of preparation put into the departure prior to the change in administrations. So who knows what would have happened. But the policy in and of itself is a continuation of the Trump policy, which was to right. depart from that country. Right. Be this is my thought on Afghanistan. I think that the United States got defeated and that Biden just had to get out and had to get out damn quick. I, I know, think, and I think that I think Trump it predates yeah, this, I do this too. Uh, I do too. internal admission right, of defeat right. predates Trump. There was uh, no admission of defeat. Well, I, right, right. It's an internal. It's an internal admission right. of debate. Uh, in fact, I think Trump defeat. wanted to withdraw to give him some kind of credit because he knew there was going to be a defeat. So let's get out now. And I do think he would have done it probably better because I think once Biden was elected, he was convinced that we could stay. Right. I bet you by the military. And then all of a sudden the Taliban said, no, you can't stay. And this is it. Get out. Yeah. And I think he did the right thing, frankly, by getting out. But the getting yeah. out, as you said, it was the a op catastrophe. The, the, catastrophe. Optics, the optics were terrible. Well, there was terrible. no preparation, I don't right. think. The was optics there? were terrible. Uh, there w it wasn't done well in advance. And the intelligence was bad. Right. That the Why was the intelligence bad? Well, the intelligence is always bad mm -hmm. in many situations uh, like this. But How in, could it have been bad? In this instance, they uh, assumed that the Taliban, in its attempt to recapture the country and its reentry into Kabul, the uh, capital mm -hmm. city, right. was going to be a, a more protracted process. Right. But why did they do that? Did they make that mistake? Was it a mistake, or were they just trying to stay there? That's a good question, Sandy. You know? I, I don't know. I don't know if it was an I think they were trying to stay there. Okay. That's okay. what I think, but I don't have any real hard evidence of right. that. I just know, why would intelligence be so stupid? Why right. would they have missed the fact that the, the American citizens knew that that was going to happen, yeah. that they were going to take over? The interesting thing is that people on the left that would normally uh, align themselves with Biden, for the first time, were critical of the I know. Biden administration. I saw that. Yeah. In that they actually were proposing uh, a longer stay. I know. Why? For the first time. And, and even if that meant they were going to, uh, you know, attack their, their savior, Biden, President why? Biden. Why? Why did that happen? I don't know, Sandy. Because yeah. they didn't want to give any credence to Trump. I think that most of the left has been guilty of well, what. Yeah, I'm sorry. The Trump Josh. derangement syndrome. Right. Anything that Trump has ever done is bad, and everything to save the Biden administration is okay. Right. Now, however, that's not how uh, 
even though the narrative, you may have a, a correct narrative, that's it's not playing out from a policy standpoint. No, I right know now, it. I know it. As um, I know it. going through a number of these different foreign policy. And, no, because I think I think in general that you're right. I think there are key differences, and maybe we'll get to that. But so in terms of foreign policy, your contention or argument is that it's just a continuation of the Trump administration. Take Saudi Arabia, for example. Okay, what about it? Candidate Biden took a very harsh stance against uh, the current crown prince of Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. uh, Mohammed bin Salman. Uh, he's, he did? he's alleged, yes, uh, bin Salman is alleged to have Killed. orchestrated the killing of that uh, right. journalist, Kosho uh, Khashoggi, right. Jamal Khashoggi, right. a Washington Post journalist who had an American yep. green card, lived outside of Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I won't spare you the details, but he was, you know, horrifically mutilated and right. killed. In Chopped a, up into little pieces, sawed into little oh, pieces. Right. Okay. So yeah. you you finished my my. Yeah. Thought. Right. Yeah. I don't know why he wouldn't bring that up. It was uh, it was in an it was in a foreign embassy in mm -hmm. Turkey where it happened mm -hmm. in, an, in an office. Mm -hmm. uh, and candidate Biden said that sanctions would be imposed against Saudi Arabia as well as the Crown Prince himself, uh, where the Trump administration largely tried to ignore mm -hmm. the uh, the involvement of the Saudi prince right. because of their personal and business dealings right. that they have in that uh, in that country the Trump family has mm -hmm. in that country as well as with the prince mm -hmm. uh, however president biden when he came in and had the opportunity to impose sanctions imposed sanctions on a limited group of people that the crown prince offered as potential uh, the potential killers, mm -hmm. and there were no sanctions against the the prince himself, mm -hmm. uh, because when it came to it, uh, Biden wasn't able to to pull that. Wasn't off. able to, or didn't, didn't want, want to. to. Didn't uh -huh. want to. Why not? Not sure. Not sure. Because of the relationship that the country has with the Saudis, the Saudis uh, behind the scenes are actually working with the Israelis. Yeah. And there is this uh, Middle Eastern attempt. To isolate Iran, which right. the Sunni they're competitors, aren't they? Iran right. and Saudi right. Arabia. And on, on a, from a religious standpoint, religious philosophy standpoint, the the Saudis, UAE, and most of, a good number of the countries in the Middle East are Sunni Muslims, and mm -hmm. the Iranians are Shiite Muslims. Right. So that's that's an internal thing between those countries that why they don't like one another. They have a different True, philosophy. but they're also both interested in hegemony in the Middle East. Absolutely. I mean, they're both they're in a power struggle, too. It's not just a religious difference. No, the, religious, the religious differences are not only yeah, just uh, That's for edification that. for the yeah, public. Right, right, you know, right, that, right, uh, right, right. But, yeah, behind the scenes, you're talk, you're, this is a power struggle. Right. Absolutely. Be, but I don't really understand. I don't understand those kinds of power struggles because they get so lethal. Yes. You know, and that's, like, for instance, in Yemen. What the heck is going on there? Yeah. You know, I don't really yeah, understand. You essentially that. have a proxy war right. between the Be Saudis and the Iranians right, exactly. happening there. And, and it, we, we are in, we've been involved, too, with respect to the arming right. the Saudis. Right. We're arming the Saudis. Right. Yeah. That's one of our oldest allies in the Middle East is Saudi right. Arabia, even though it's an absolutely brutal regime. Brutal regime and its connections with September the September 11th attacks right. continue to be revealed in declassified memos 20 so years So what you're after. saying is crucial to understand, I think, even the nature of the U.S. federal government, is that no matter who's the president, the foreign policy pretty much stays the same. Because I mean, it's not controlled by the president, no matter who he is. You can't downplay the role that institutions have. Well, you can't uh, and, downplay the secret institutions like the Central Intelligence Agency sure. either. But even the not-so-secret ones. Yeah, I know. Ones, like, even the not-so-secret ones. Department of Defense. Yeah, yeah. A, a, a single man or woman is often not enough to, you know, recharge or, re or change the acts of an institution that has had a certain policy for a lengthy period of time. I would guess it's that difficult, that's right. difficult to change the culture as well as the actions and policies of the institution. Right. Well, well, think of the defense budget, so-called defense budget. Think about the fact that, that Biden did not favor any cuts in that, did he? No, that's right. I, no. I, I don't. I, and that I depends that. on perpetual war. It would appear to me. Right. Which is certainly still going on. This the situation in Syria is the same as well, right? Right. There's no changes in Syria. Right. I mean, what was revolutionary, you know, if you want to use the term, uh, uh, um, 
drawing a blank, uh, cleaning, uh, draining the swamp right. that, that, uh, that prior President Trump mentioned. Uh, what was very different about what he was trying to do, not that he did, but it was trying to do, at least in the beginning, is to disengage from a lot of places in the world uh, in, in, that, that have been in this perpetual state of war like that, we have actively, that we have actively right. been involved in. And I think at that time, President Trump's belief and uh, policies that he was proposing was that this was unsustainable. Number one, yes, but, you know, I always was interested in Trump's foreign policy because what I saw from the beginning was crucial, that he wanted to make deals with Russia. He right. did not want Cold War any longer with Russia or Putin. I favored that. I thought right. that that was, and I think that's a lot of reasons why he did get jettisoned by the secret state, by the, you know, by the, by the deep state, whatever you well, want to call yeah, it. Yeah, the interesting part of that is, uh, and, I, and I actually acknowledge uh, I that hope that so. was yeah. an interest on yeah, his right. part, yeah. f at, at the very least in terms of working with yeah. the Russians on, on different types of things. Uh, however, uh, I don't know who is responsible. You're calling a secret state. Uh, I wouldn't. I, I'm not sure. But then bringing people into the fold like a John Bolton, who yeah, right. wound up screwing him later anyway. I know. Uh, he got rid of him, though, too. Well, yeah, but to even contemplate having someone with Mr. Bolton's policies in your administration when your role or your attempt is to try to reduce America's footprint in some of these uh, difficult places where, you know, Mr. Bolton never liked, never saw a war that he didn't like, except, except for Vietnam, the one he was eligible to serve in. So, <laughs> right, he didn't go, though, did right, he? Right, of course not, right. of course not. But, uh, so, having these people in his administration, uh, it, it created a, 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 an odd contrast from the stated policy, which was to disengage, and then you have people, you know, we're talking, I mean, he was a national security advisor, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. No, a I think pretty, so. Pretty, pretty but, big position. Right, but let's... Okay, for once, let's put yourself in Trump's head for a bit. Yeah. Okay, which I honestly tried to do. Yeah. Um, at the time, because he's the president of the United States, and I think we needed to figure it out sure. at the time. So he's, I think that the guy put America first. That's a policy that was hotly disputed by everybody, not only the opposition of the Democrats, but also by whatever you want to call the Central Intelligence Agency or the globalists in the economy or much of the Democratic Party. What, they, what, what the economy is tending toward is a globalist economy. Trump or, didn't or, like that. Yeah. Okay, he didn't like our relationship with Russia, and he was actually, in his own mind, putting America first. Now, that, though, brought him into political problems sure, sure. with people like John Bolton. So I think that Trump was trying to maneuver between two impossible contradictions. Well, you have a situation, then, where, you know, uh, I mean, I'm sure people on the left aren't going to like. No, they don't my, like anything I've like, said no, for a long like, time. Like my mention of Trump and yeah, Lincoln, I know Lincoln in the same sentence. But yeah. There was a great book that Doris Kearns uh, Goodwin wrote about, mm -hmm. uh, you know, tr uh, Lincoln's cabinet. I read it. Uh, I'm drawing a blank as to what it, the name it was. was. That you keep your enemies close. Right. Basically. Right. So President Lincoln, you know, essentially, yep. in that context, if you put him in a modern context, right. would have brought someone like a John Bolton right. in. So he could kind of keep tabs. Not only on, keep tabs, but prove to the opposition yeah. that Trump faced that he was at least listening or that he was throwing them a bone. Sure. That's what I thought he was doing. Um, right. And then you remember that, you, as you said, Bolton left and he also betrayed Trump in a lot of ways. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, and I mean, Trump paid for all that. Remember the whole Russia collusion stuff? Right. He, his friendship or his willingness to consider a decency toward Russia was treated as a Russian hoax. Yeah. I mean, that was, you know, that, that policy. Yeah. Uh, and look, I mean, you, you look at, uh, you know, Obama's attempt to re yeah. reconcile with Cuba. Right. Similarly, or Iran. You didn't get any credit about it. No, no. You know, I mean, if if the, the mindset of the foreign policy, policy establishment, put it that way, that's good. Yeah, that's good. That are in place. No, they uh, hated it. The, the foreign policy toward Cuba. I mean, John F. Kennedy got skewered on foreign policy toward Cuba. It's important to somebody. I mean, it's hard to imagine how that island has stuck in people's 
anger for so many years. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's, ama it's just poor island. It's just yeah. poor social, but it's socialist. Right, and and there is a, a political uh, game that's being waged in, in the state of Florida right. because of a large you know, exile Cuban population. Right. I wouldn't say just in Florida. It's also pretty big in New Jersey, isn't it? Sure, absolutely. You know, absolutely. So. But, yeah. But, okay, but uh, so your contention is that it's basically the same administration, particularly in terms of foreign policy. Largely in terms of foreign policy. Okay, okay. T but turning to domestics, the domestic yeah. scene, you still th you think that's the same? On immigration, the issue of immigration. Legal. We, we, legal immigration. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually going to say even illegal. Okay. Uh, where uh, there were supposedly far many more uh, illegal entrants right. in the country during the Trump administration mm -hmm. than the Obama administration. The Obama, yeah, the Obama administration, yes, yes. Obama administration had the reputation of, uh, he personally had the reputation of being called the deporter in chief. Yeah, I know it, and he did. Right, oh, absolutely, he did. absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so. so why do you, I mean, my, my thing is that, and I watch this every day, and it's reported every day now on all the networks. Yeah. Only at first it was reported only really on Fox, of this border crisis of people flooding into the country. Haitians all living under a bridge in Del Rio, Texas, is that the place? I believe so. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it appears to me that this is a difference because Trump wanted to put a wall up. Right. Correct? That's correct. They've already repudiated that. The right. Biden amendment. Isn't that Trump, a Trump, difference? Yeah. Well, Trump wanted to put a physical wall yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, the wall that's still up right now is uh, a red tape wall that exists uh, and which hasn't really changed. But how, who are all these people flooding in, though? Aren't they being released? On uh, with a court date, many of them? Some are. Yeah. Well, Trump but that's, tried, but that's, that's always Trump, But that's always yeah, been but the Trump. System. I yeah. believe tried to stop that. Tried, right. Right. And Biden, see, I'm concerned about this, this big difference, because I don't understand it. If you accept the figures of people coming across the border, why is this happening? Is it an attempt to get some kind of a cheap labor market? Why on earth is this happening? Okay, the other thing that, that I find concerning is that there's so many jobs in this country that are going unfilled. Yeah, there's, uh, I mean, for lack of a better why? description, people don't want to work. Why not? I mean, they're getting great benefits. They not, were no, up no, until they were recently. cut off. Uh, up until recently, yeah. they were getting great benefits in many jobs mm -hmm. and industries. The benefits that they were getting for staying home right. exceeded what they were getting when they actually had to. No, and and I understand work. that. I understand yeah. people's desire not to go back to some crummy, right. a job that they think is crummy and low sure, paid. Sure, sure, sure. But those benefits have been cut off. Yeah. So what's going on so now? There's something else happening in yeah, the labor right. market, what is which it I happening? think you know uh, I don't have an answer for. Nobody being, seems to. It, but it seems to be something that they're trying to study, and understand, and it's actually disproportionately affecting, if, if, if affecting is the right term, men more than women. It seems like a lot of men are not going back into the labor market. Lord, many jobs, you know, really. Me? I mean, I've worked at crummy jobs a lot in my it's life. Not now. I mean, right. I am a lawyer, and that's, uh, that, that's been quite rewarding. But, you know, I worked in, as a nurse's aide. I worked in jobs that were very... I worked on a, picking tobacco right. on, on a farm in... Um, Connecticut when I was a teenager. Why would people want to do that again if they don't have to? Yeah. Uh, Besides which, it's lousy pay. Right. But so, all, all the factors that come into immigration where you have people from overseas begging to do to be a nurse's aide or I know, so pizza that's what or, I mean. Yeah. Why then? What is the, why is this happening? Why are people being allowed into the country? I don't mind, I, I don't, I like people coming into the country. I like people being here in Burlington, as a matter of fact, because I think it makes Burlington youthful and yeah. have, have a lot of young people. But the Biden administration seems to be allowing a lot of illegal, or rather, people are coming across the border, and I guess they say they're going to apply for asylum, so they're being released with a court date. Yeah. And the, Trump tried to stop that. Right. But the approvals, I mean, again, the institutional changes that uh, Trump made uh, within the immigration system with the appointment of judges, yeah. uh, however, those have not gone away. Uh, so even though Biden may have a certain policy at the border, uh, there— If he does? Or— well, or the policy could be letting people in. Yeah. The policy and the courts have not changed. 
Uh, no, I know, but they don't get court dates, as well, they, we both know. For no, a, they do. They do. It's yeah, a it's, year later. I yeah. have yeah. They don't get immigrant. They don't get right. work authorization before that. Yeah. I think our time is. We're getting the high sign from the okay, folks here. Okay, great. But anyway, the domestic policy is something we maybe should explore the next time around. Maybe the next time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Kurt. You're we'll see you in a month or so. I hope.